Hello and welcome to this A-level biology revision video on using immobilised enzymes. If you have not watched the previous videos on enzyme action and limiting factors of enzymes, you may want to watch those first. Using isolated enzymes instead of whole organisms have some clear advantages. They're less wasteful. Whole organisms use up <coughs> substrate growing and reproducing producing biomass rather than product. Isolated enzymes do not. They're more efficient. Isolated enzymes work at much higher concentrations than it's possible when they are part of a whole microorganism. They are more specific. There are no unwanted enzymes present, so no wasteful side reactions taking place. And they maximise efficiency. Isolated enzymes can be given ideal concentrations and conditions for maximum product formation, which may be different from those needed to grow the whole microorganism. There is less downstream processing, so pure product is produced by the isolated enzymes. Whole microorganisms give a variety of products in the final broth, making isolation of the desired product more difficult and therefore more expensive. Most of the isolated enzymes used in industrial processes are extracellular enzymes produced by microorganisms. They are generally easier and therefore cheaper to use than intracellular enzymes. Extracellular enzymes are secreted, making them easy to isolate and use. Each microorganism produces relatively few extracellular enzymes, making them easy to identify and isolate the required enzyme. In comparison, each microorganism produces hundreds of intracellular enzymes which would need extracting from the cell and separating. This separation would take a long time and would be very expensive. Extracellular enzymes tend to be much more robust than intracellular enzymes. Conditions outside of a cell are less tightly controlled than the conditions in the cytoplasm, so extracellular enzymes are adapted to cope with a greater variation in temperature and pH than intracellular enzymes. This means that they are less likely to denature, so therefore will stay active or work for a longer period of time. An immobilised enzyme is an enzyme that is attached to an inert insoluble material such as calcium alginate. This can be can provide increased resistance changes in conditions such as pH and or temperature. The four principal methods of immobilizing enzymes are absorption, this is where an enzyme is attached by weak forces to the outside of an inert material such as a glass or a matrix. Entrapment, so enzymes are trapped within polymers such as gel or an alginate bead. Encapsulation, so the enzymes are trapped inside a selectively permeable membrane such as nylon. And by cross-linkage, the enzymes are bonded covalently to a matrix such as cellulose as a consequence of the chemical reactions that hold it in place due to cross-linking. So, what are the advantages of immobilised enzymes? Using enzymes instead of other molecules in reactions is useful because enzymes catalyse specific reactions and work at much lower temperatures than chemical catalysts. The molecule that an enzyme acts on is called the substrate. Enzymes can either be mixed freely with the substrate in solution or immobilised to a solid support so they do not mix freely. This provides a wider range of uses for them. 
There are many advantages of the immobilization, one of which is that enzymes can be reused, catalyzing the same reaction many times over. Binding the enzymes to a surface also makes them more stable and less likely to denature. In addition, there will be no enzymes left in the product at the end, so purification is not necessary. If purification is not necessary, then the process becomes cheaper. There are, however, some disadvantages. Immobilization requires extra time equipment at work, so therefore will cost extra money. There may be a reduction in the reaction rates if the enzymes cannot mix freely with the substrate, and immobilized enzymes cannot be used if one of the substrates is insoluble. So that's if one of the substrates will not dissolve in either a solvent or in water. There are a wide range of uses for immobilized enzymes, and in this video I will just go through three, three of them. Immobilized penicillin actylase used to make semi-synthetic penicillin from naturally produced penicillin. Many types of bacteria have developed resistant to naturally occurring penicillins, so they are no longer affected by drugs. Fortunately, many bacteria are still vulnerable to the semi-synthetic penicillins produced by penicillin actylase. So they are very important in treating infections caused by bacteria resistant to the original penicillin. Hundreds of tons of these medicines are made every year by immobilized penicillin actylase. Immobilized glucose isomerase is used to produce fructose from glucose. Fructose is much sweeter than glucose or sucrose and is widely used as a sweetener in foods. Glucose is produced from cheap starch rich plants the glucose isomerase is then turned into fructose by a process that changes the structure of the glucose molecule. The last use that I want to talk about is immobilized lactase, which is used to produce lactose-free milk. Some people and cats are intolerant to lactose, so immobilized lactase hydrolyzes lactose to form glucose and lactase giving lactose-free milk. If you've not watched the previous two videos on enzymes, go back, have a watch of them, go have a practice at using or working through some exam questions, looking at the uses of enzymes. And if you're watching this before your exam, good luck.